Hello guys, good morning. Um, this is our first lecture with regards to ESAM CRCS. So the first topic is uh, actually compromise the whole section of the book. So it's a summary. So uh, the topic title is actually Comprehensive Serialization Guide and its concept. Actually, it is approved by ESAMS and also it is approved by DOH of Abu Dhabi. So I'm your instructor and the speaker for today. I'm Mr. Jansen Gasita Cabrillos. I'm a registered nurse at the same time CRCST. So we will start now for central service workflow. In CSSD, guys, once we clean instruments, once we process uh, soiled instruments, soiled instruments means they are used use instruments. So once we process sold instruments, there are workflows needs to be followed. So from a soiled area, so once you re once you receive the instruments from from soiled area going to sterile storage area. So that's the process. So in in your soiled area there there are your decontamination um process processing area. So you are doing manual brushing and then uh, mechanical cleaning, cleaning process. So once you process your instruments, you will do the soil to soil storage. That's the workflow. But if you will clean your environment, once you clean your CSSD room, because we are the CSSD technician is the first hand responsible in cleaning the CSSD room. It's different uh, workflow. If you're cleaning the CSSD room, you need to start from sterile storage area to the soiled area, which is the dirtiest area. So central service workflow is Actually, the delivery of sold instruments, medical devices, and there are distinction of every room needs to be followed. So before, uh, and now it is segregated actually. So you have your the contamination area, which is manual brushing, and then you have your polishing area inspection and pouching area, and then you have your um, sterilization area. So one way flow of materials from the soil area to clean processing area and on the sterile storage area is required. So to facilitate one way flow of goods and maintain distinction between soil and clean work areas, physical barriers or walls are used to segregate the functional areas. So actually, divided channel, uh, they are divided with walls. But if it is not divided with walls, there are um, air curtains or pressurized air. For the contamination area, there are negative pressure air. So um, the areas in CSSD include decontamination, preparation and packaging, prep and pack, sterilization, and sterile storage for distribution. As you can see in your slides, um, there are four areas in, in CSSD. Actually, this is the ideal area for all. So the, the first area is the contamination area. The second area is preparation and packaging area. The third area is sterilization where your autoclave is available there for uh, processing the instruments. And the last is storage and distribution. Idea for small clinics and medical centers. There are three areas in uh, medical centers and clinics. Actually, they merge the receiving and cleaning and decontamination area, and then preparation and packaging, and then sterile storage area. 
here in yung AE, most medical center and clinics, we have two areas or two rooms. So sometimes we are merging the receiving, cleaning, and the contamination area and preparation and packaging area or preparation and packaging area and sterilization and storage area. So, the contamination area where you once you receive your soil instruments, you need to do manual brushing. So, manual brushing is removing of uh, Just a moment. In the contamination area, guys, um, to make safe by removing or reducing contamination by infectious organism or harmful substance, the reduction of contamination to acceptable level. So it is either by brushing, manual brushing, and then mechanical cleaning or ultrasonic machine cleaning. So receiving in the decontamination area where all soil instruments and other ins items are received. Physical and chemical process that renders an inanimate object, such as medical device that may be contaminated with harmful microbes. Cleaning is the first step in the sterilization process. All items returned to this area are considered contaminated and potentially infectious, and items cannot be considered sterile if they are not effectively clean. Brush under the surface of the water to avoid aerosol. So, Brush under the surface of the water, um, usually in your, in your decontamination area, there are two sinks. So your first sink will be your brushing area. Your first sink, you need to fill it with water. And then you need to brush the instruments under the surface of the water to avoid aerosol. Aerosol means there are small, small particles of water that might contain um, harmful or infectious pathogen. So we have three common infectious pathogens. Our three common um, infectious pathogens are Hep B, Hep C, and HIV. In dental facility, they are considering CGD. So as you can see in the picture, they have they have two sinks, but they they still did not fill the first sink with water. But you you need to fill the first sink with water so so that you once you brush uh, the instruments, you will brush it under the surface of the water. So the brushing technique is through and fro, which means forward and backward. That's the simple term. So you need, if, if your instrument has a groove, you need to follow that groove. So in this area, in decontamination area, you need to have a full PPE gear. PPE is your personal protective equipment, is your protection against any um, harmful substance or harmful substance because you are using uh, chemicals. And to protect yourself from pathogens or any infectious organism. So CS technician working in the contamination area must be protected from the environment to meet the facility and occupational safety and health administration or OSHA safety requirements. CS technician must wear special attire called PPE or personal protective equipment. So in actually OSHA is international. Here in UAE, it's OSHAD, or Occupational Safety and Health of Abu Dhabi. So what are your PPE needs to be wear in the contamination area? So you have your gown, your utility gloves, your face mask, face shield, shoe cover, and then hair net or hair covering.
The second part in your decontamination area is cleaning using ultrasonic machine or mechanical cleaner. So ultra, ultrasonic, I will show you later what is the ultrasonic machine. Ultrasonic machine is is a small tank for a, medic, a small medical center, but there are big tank or big machine, ultrasonic machine in hospital. So ultra means begin and sonic means sound. So this machine are cleaning the instrument using sound waves. So these are used for fine cleaning. Your first step in the contamination in this area, you ha you will do the manual brushing. So you will do it under the surface of the water. The second one, once you finish the manual brushing, you need you need to put the instruments for fine cleaning in the ultrasonic machine. So ultrasonic machine used to remove soil from joints, crevices, lumens, and others. So before we will use the ultrasonic machine, so once we fill the tank with water and chemicals, we need to degas the ultrasonic for 10 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes or 30, it depends. So before each time it is changed, the gas bubbles reduce the energy release during implosion. So once you freshly mix a chemicals in this machine, you can see bubbles. So you need the gas means you need to remove the bubbles. So in this area, um, cavitation, the process used by an ultrasonic cleaner in which low pressure bubbles and a cleaning solution burst inward and dislodge soil from instrument. Cavitation is the process, is the term they use once a uh, uh, low pressure bubbles from the ultrasonic machine um, dislodge the the soil from the instruments. So automated mechanical washer are not appropriate for washing electrical battery or pneumatic devices unless otherwise stated in device ISU. Uh, this machine, guys, since you need to soak the instruments in this tank. So, cleaning uh, battery-operated uh, instruments are not allowed to be soaked here because it will uh, it will cause damage to that instruments. So, it states, but it states unless otherwise stated in device IFU. IFU means instruction for use. So, if ever, even though it is battery-operated, but your IFU states that it can be. So, in ultrasonic machine, then the AFU will be followed. So, before putting instruments in ultrasonic machine, instruments must be pre cleaned prior placing them in a sonic. So, you need to do the manual brushing first. All instruments must be completely submerged in the solution. Change instrument placed in the sonic cleaner must be unlatched. Before, guys, it is open. The word they use is open. If you see some instruments that it has a lock, you need to unlatch those instruments. So you need, the simple term for unlatch is unlock. So, as for the new updates of FC79-2017, the word unlatch is used since the accreditation surveyor overinterpreted the word open in the sentence. All jointed instruments should be open. Before, when they said open, for example, just imagine your scissor. When they, when they said open, they think to, to widely open the instruments. But, it doesn't mean that it states before open, it needs to be widely open. It, it is only needs to uh, 
unlatch or unlock if there's a lock. If there's no lock, at least it is open. So stainless steel instruments should not be mixed with aluminum, brass, or copper in a solid cycle. There are inter um, chemical reaction with different types of metals. So once you, you once you mix aluminum and other uh, metals, you can see some reaction on the instruments. It became darkened. So your mechanical cleaner, guys, um, should be set the temperature to, to 27 degrees Celsius to 43 degrees Celsius. Actually, you can you can operate the mechanical cleaner without uh, setting the temperature to that range, even zero or even as norm uh, as it is. It can be used, but Using the temperature bat or setting the temperature of your ultrasonic machine to 27 to 43 degrees Celsius, it can easily dislodge soiled instruments, especially for those dried blood, or if there are dried blood in your instruments, it can easily be, it can easily be removed using um, Temperature bath with 27 degrees Celsius to 43 degrees Celsius. So, temperature above 60 degrees is not allowed. It is not recommended because it will coagulate protein. So, once you coagulate protein, we cannot see it in our naked eye, but once we set it above 60, 60 degrees Celsius, it is more difficult to remove those soil um, those uh, bacteria and viruses. So run on a sonic machine minimum of 15 minutes, maximum to 6 minutes. It depends. But CSSD technician, we are actually um, dependent on instrument manufacturer or ISU. So, instruction for use manual. Every instrument we receive, every machine we receive, we need to check the IFU. There are different types of cleaning process of every instrument. There are different types of um, operating the machine. So, we need to follow the IFU. Water should be changed when visually soiled or at regular intervals. Um, it is mandated to be changed daily. The, the chemicals in the ultrasonic, actually guys, the chemicals in ultrasonic machine is enzymatic cleaner. So once you, once you are here in our CSSD room, you can see those chemicals. So for this, um, ultrasonic machine, enzymatic cleaner or enzymatic detergent is, uh, is used in this, um, uh, in this machine. So it is mandated to be changed daily and as needed or as needed because if ever you have a lot of instruments to be processed, your, your chemicals will be ineffective in cleaning the in, um, the soiled instruments. So tongue should be drained and clean and dry at the end of each use. So once you are if if you are in a twenty four hours duty then you need to remove the remaining chemicals, cleanse it with 
uh, top quarter, and you can rinse it with distilled as a final rinsing, and then dry it up. For ultrasonic machine, please um, bear in mind that there are quality checks to be monitored here daily. So daily and weekly actually. Um, we are using foil test. I'll try to search later with, in YouTube so that you can see what is foil test is. Foil test is actually using a tin foil or Aluminum foil, what you use in your kitchen, you need to cut it in a rectangular or a square uh, form and then soak it in the ultrasonic machine for 60 seconds. So once you remove the aluminum foil, it will be perforated. So it has a hole on that uh, aluminum foil. So the second quality check for ultrasonic machine is actually new. It's a new update as per SC, uh, as SC79. It's a new update. We are using uh, Sonocheck. So I will discuss later what is Sonocheck, and I will discuss some of the quality checks later. So guys, the first area is your decontamination area. Please remember it. You are doing manual brushing, and then you are, you, after doing manual brushing, Using steel brush, nylon brush, brass brush, you, you will soak the instrument in ultrasonic machine and run it for 15 to 30 minutes, depending on uh, depending on your assessment if it needs more more time to clean. So once you remove your instrument from this. Uh, from ultrasonic machine, you need to rinse it with tap water and then final, finally rinse it with distilled water so that you can remove the total, uh, remove totally the chemicals and other, um, other minerals that still in, still, uh, stick on the, on the instruments. So once you are done rinsing the instruments in a distilled water, you, you can proceed, you can send it, you can send the instrument in the preparation and packaging area. So in this area, each item is carefully inspected for cleanliness, proper function, and possible defects. So Inspection, inspect device for cleanliness and proper condition and function. You need to check all instruments in this area if still they are working or not. So, for example, I will just give a simple example like your small scissor. So, scissor, especially in hospital and medical centers, they are commonly used. So to check the scissor, small scissor, is needs to be checked using latex rubber. So there are um, latex rubber available in the market to check the small scissor. So you need to cut the small scissor using the yellow latex. If it can, it cannot be cut, then your scissor needs to be sharpened. 
So instruments and other devices are assembled. Assembled, guys, because um, I forgot to, to mention it. In your, once you soak, soak instrument in ultrasonic machine, you need to deassemble the instruments. Once you return, or once you place the instruments in preparation and packaging, you need to assemble it again for testing. And then you need to deassemble it again once you sterilize and pouch it. Pouch and sterilize it. So instruments and other devices are assembled in this area for testing, and then they assemble again once you are finished testing. So package and labeled in preparation for sterilization. CS technician must be able to select proper packaging system and use proper techniques for wrapping and packaging and sterilization. So, in this area, instruments are properly inspected for cleanliness. If still, the, there is no blood uh, remaining in the crevices of the instrument. If there is no cement in the instrument, so you need to check on it. So, proper function and possible defects and proper selection of packaging system and proper techniques for wrapping and packaging items. So, we will discuss the pro proper uh, wrapping and packaging later on, I think it is chapter 10 or 11, like that. No, chapter 16 or 17. So, self sealing pouches is the first option in the clinic. So, in the hospital, they are using linens, the green linens, or the muslin wrap. So, Pouches should be tamper evident. Tamper evident means once you open the the pouches, you can detect that it was open. So there are signs because the the edges of the pouches cannot. Once you open it, it will not be returned to the same um, usual. Uh, usual sealing process, uh, sealing, sealing of that, the pouch. So place the chemical indicator inside the pouch. Over the instrument where the indicator can be easily, easily seen by the staff. Actually guys, please be aware of the over the instrument because um, there are, in the exam, Over the instrument means different to them. So, actually the proper term for that is next to the instrument. Actually, we, I use over actually on this slide because you will put the chemical indicator above, above the instruments. So, it is on the outer layer or plastic area of the pouch. pouch. but they are using next to the instrument. So chemical indicator should be placed next to the instrument, not over the instrument. So preparation and packaging area. Label each pouch using label gun. Actually, guys, there are different types of um, labeling packages or pouches. So you can use manual, which means some some facility they are still are writing the the date they sterilize the instrument, the batch number, and the signature. But there are di different types of labeling. So the first is using label gun. The second is Manual, which is you need to stamp the date, you need to stamp the uh, batch number. So 
So you're for for using label gun, label each pouch has using label gun for batch number and date. You need to calibrate the label gun to to the next batch number. What is the current date, the expiry date, and then the CS technician code or the ID number of the CS technician. So uh, as per the audit team, labeling each pouch can be done after the fair relation procedure where you can manually stamp. If ever you are using label gun, you are doing it after putting the instrument in the autoclave. If you are doing manual uh, labeling, you will label it once it is finished. So, pouches can be done after the sterilization procedure where you can manually stamp the date, batch number, and signature using non smudge marker or not ballpoint. Ball pen is not um, acceptable in labeling pouches because it can penetrate the pouch and damage the integrity of the pouch. So for implants, please make sure to include class 5 or 6 chemical indicator inside. Once you, once you pouch or pack the, an implant kit, so if your doctor, if you, if you know that it is used for implants, so it's either ortho, ortho surgery, or dental surgery. Once you know that the, uh, this is an implant kit, then you need to place a chemical indicator inside, which is class 5 or 6, and one biological indicator. One biological indicator, I will discuss it later. Biological indicator is uh, there's a bacteria inside a vial or ampule, it depends on the manufacturer. And a, and a class 5 or 6 chemical indicator outside, outside the tray. So you need to put class 5 or 6 chemical indicator inside. Plus the biological indicator, and once you close it, you need you still need to put class five or six outside the tray. Why? Because your your nurses and the user needs to check without opening the pouch that this pouch was being exposed to steam. So that's the purpose of your chemical indicator. Your chemical indicator, once it changed from blue from blue to black, it doesn't mean your your instrument is sterilized. It only means your instrument is processed in the autoclave. It was sent to autoclave. So make sure seal in self sealing pouches or sealed by sealer should not should be no air pockets seen. So, air pockets means simple um, term is there's no fold, fold in your uh, pouches. It should, it, once you seal the pouches, it should be plainly um, as, as if it is iron. So, there's no crumple, there's no fold, folding. Because you're folding in your sealing uh, area, it can it can enter contaminated air to the instruments and it will cause the instruments to to be unsterilized. So please be re please be uh, be reminded once you are you you are putting instrument or sharp instrument in the in e pouches, you need to use tip protector. Tip protector actually is a silicone rubber that you need you can put on the tip of the sharp object so that it will not penetrate the pouch. So if you don't have a tip protector, then you can double pouch the instruments. 
pouch within a pouch, it is acceptable, yes, as long as the inner pouch should not be folded. So, you need to make uh, a smaller pouch a smaller pouch inside and a bigger pouch outside. So you need to check and fit the inner pouch that it cannot be folded because once you once you fold the pouch, it can retain some. Uh, it can it can retain some steam on the pouch, so it will cause. Um, wet packs on your pouches. An instrument should not be placed in too narrow packaging where it can cause stress in the edges of the pouch. Too narrow packaging, which means um, your pouches are, your instrument is, there, uh, there is no enough space in your pouch, in your inner pouch. So, you need to find um, a pouch that that your instrument is properly fit, so it has enough space space not too crowded. Because once it is crowded, once for example the pouch is used for only this pouch is used for one instrument only, and you use two instruments or three instruments inside, the edges of your pouch will be removed or it will be open. So, scissors, forceps, forceps should be unlatched. So, the word open, it is not open already, it's unlatched. Please be reminded with the new updates, what or more internal, as per the SC79-2017, one or more internal chemical indicators should be placed within each package, tray, or rigid container. This indicator can be any type, type 3, 4, 5, or 6, but preferably a type 5 or 6 indicator, as this type of chemical indicator provides the user with more information on the critical steam sterilization parameter. So, actually, guys, in in medical centers, they are using class four. But if you are if you are in the hospital, they they will go directly to type five or six chemical indicator. So as per the new updates, again, internal chemical indicator should be placed so that one chemical indicator is visible to the person opening the package. So if I am the nurse and I will use this instrument, I need to see firsthand outside the pouch that this instrument must be exposed to steam or in the autoclave. That's the reason why the chemical indicator should be should be placed next to the instrument. So chemical indicator are in the area or areas considered least accessible to steam penetration and all applicable written IFU are followed. In CSSD guys, IFU, or instruction for use, or medical device instruction, is very important because um, every instrument, as I said, it has a different, uh, different um, approaches, approach. Every machine, there are different um procedures or how to on how to operate them in every instrument there are different procedures or protocols on how to clean them so you need to check it is important to check the ISU so if in your exam actually if it shows a written ISU it is the first answer So items to be sterilized must be properly identified and the correct methods and parameters for sterilization must be followed as per manufacturer. 
personnel working in the preparation and packaging area, um, CS must wear facility restricted attire such as scrum suit and hair covering. Sterilizer must be loaded as per required quantity and operated properly as per manufacturer instruction. So you, once you place, once you place a pouch in your perforated tray in the autoclave, You, you you don't need to overcrowd or to, you, need, you don't need to put too many instruments in one uh, one perforated tray. The reason why it, the steam cannot flow on the chamber, so it cannot penetrate all all areas of the instruments, and it cannot um, remove the steam properly. So it, it will cause wet packs. So personal working in the preparation packaging and sterilization area uh, must wear facility restricted attire such as scrum and hair covering. Guys, this is the two is very important. Actually once you enter any areas of CSSD, even you are not process doing anything, you need to put your scrub suit intended for CSSD and intended shoes. So there should be dedicated shoes and scrub suit for CSSD aside from the hair covering. So that's the three important PPE you need to wear. So sterilizer must be loaded as per required quantity and operated properly as per manufacturer instruction. Paper plastic paper arrangement should be followed in placing the pouches in the tray. So paper plastic guys, which means the paper side should be on the bottom and the plastic side on the upper part. But the actual in the exam guys, there are first option once you place instrument, once you place instrument in each perforated tray, it's still paper plastic paper arrangement, but it should be on the edge. So once you are here, I will show you how the paper plastic paper arrangement will be um, arranged, the instrument will be arranged. So, the desired temperature of the autoclave is 121 degrees to 131, or sometimes 135, it depends, as long as it will not go below 121. So, sterile storage and distribution is your uh, last area in CSSD. Clean dry shoeway in the storage area or in transportation cart is required to keep items sterile. So this is your, as you can see, this is your uh, dry shelving. In the hospital, in the hospital, they are using this one. In medical center, they are just using cabinets or uh, drawer. Once you place your instrument. You cannot overstack or place one instrument to the other. So you cannot o um, overstack the instrument. So as you can see on the, on the picture, one instrument is placed on one area. So the reason why it, it, you cannot overstack the instrument is because the lower part of the instrument, the pouch, will be that, might get damaged. So as you can see also in the picture, the, the, instrument, the instrument set has a plastic. So this is a dust cover, actually. It will protect your instruments or sterile instruments from contacting with any dust or contaminants, especially when you are transporting the instruments. So 
you can transport instruments in different ways. Some they are using transport beam. Some you, you can you you can manual manually carry the instruments. So once you manual do the manual carrying of the instruments, you need to keep the instruments away from your body. Guys, there are two types of sterility of your instrument, the event-related sterility and then the time-related. Time-related means there are um, intended months when your instrument will be expired. In DOH, Abu Dhabi, they are um, implementing the three months rules. Some facility, some um, some countries they are using one year. It depends, and some and some it, it depends on the uh, it depends on each uh, local reg regulation authority. Sometimes they are using um, three months, six months, one year. It depends. The event related is different. Actually, in the OH of Abu Dhabi. Here, they are not following the, the event-related sterility. The event-related sterility, health life is related to events that may compromise the past sterility. Event-related sterility is the concept that sterile products remain sterile until some event causes the items become contaminated. So it means your instrument is still sterile as long as it is not uh, the integrity of the pouch is still intact. It is not wet. It it doesn't fall in the uh, floor. So that's your event related sterility. So even if it, it will reach five years, ten years, as long as your pouch is intact, it is not wet. It is not open. Uh, partially open, it is not dam the, pa the pouch is not damaged, then it, it is still sterile. So consider a sterile and needs to reprocess of the following events, tear and packaging, wet packaging, drop on the contaminated surface, air pockets or, or pouches not sealed properly. So distribution involves moving supplies throughout the facility, generally from their storage location to the point of use. The goal of distribution is to move the correct items in appropriate quantities to the right places in the right time. So for distribution, guys, you need to remind your business physician that there are specific turn turnaround time in every procedures in every sterilization process because there are times that we are rushing on the need, on the need of the instruments. For example, they send your instruments at 3, 3, 8, 3 p.m. and they want your is that, that instrument, the same instruments, at 3.30. Is it possible? No. It cannot be uh, turned over with just 30 minutes. The whole process in CSSD might take, it depends, it might take a minimum of one and a half hour. So one hour and 30 minutes minimum. So hand carry, faster and easier to hand carry small items to the point of use, deliver with a protective cover, dust cover, or a clean close bin. Take items away from the body to avoid contaminating it. And once you send instruments, guys, to different departments of uh, in, in a clinic or hospital, you need to wear your lab gown. You cannot wear your um, scrum suit, which is intended for CSSD, in other areas in the hospital. So you need to use a lab gown. Or a coat.
So close or open cars, easier and safer than hand carrying items. Open carts should be covered against the whole traffic. Open cart guys is prone for contamination because your instruments is exposed. While the closed cart, these are the preferable, preferably uh, methods of sending instruments or getting the instruments, soil instruments uh, from CSSD to the point of use or point of use to CSSD. So the processing cycle in CSSD, these are, as you can see in the slides, the first step in CSSD is to clean. That's the first step. You need, once you receive the instrument, receiving is not the first step. So the first step will start once you clean the instrument. So you need to clean the instrument You need to clean it using manual brushing and then mechanical cleaning process, which is ultrasonic machine. So you need, in this area, you need to deassemble the instrument if it is assembled. You need to deassemble it. Your next step is inspection. So once you inspect your instrument from deassembled, you need to Assemble it again for inspection. And then, guys, this is deassembled and then packaged. So you need to deassemble spelling. So you need to deassemble again and then package and then send it to sterilization and then storage and dispense. This is the cycle in CSST. So this is your routine procedures in CSST. So I think we are done with the first uh, topic. So let's have a five minutes break and then let's be back at Um, guys, do you have any question? So far, no. So far, no. It's clear.
Hello guys, let's proceed. The next topic is CSSD Common Equipment and Supplies. So in order for a certain sterilization department for a function, a need of equipment and supplies should be readily available to conduct the basic tests in all functions from decontamination, inspection, and packaging to sterilization and storage and distribution. So this equip equipment and supplies is a very basic materials needed in CS department of function. This will guide a starting clinic in a center or what on what equipment must be need to be available. Actually the in the hospital and medical center we have the same equipment but in the hospital they have the bigger one. Or do you have the larger equipment than the medical center has? But still, it is the same. For example, in medical center, they have autoclave. In the hospital, they also have autoclave. But they have different type of autoclave, the bigger type. So this is the ultrasonic machine or ultrasonic cleaner. So... It cleans instrument using sound waves or through high frequency low amplitude vibration. So the sounds it generates is actually more than 85 decibels of sound. So you can operate the time, which is, it depends on your assessment. If it needs 30 minutes cleaning or one hour, it depends. If your temperature needs to be set 27 to 43 degrees Celsius, if not, it is, it's still okay. It's okay. The quality check here, I already discussed it in the first topic, which is the foil test. And the second is the sono check, which is there's a glass nuclei beads that will change from green or blue to yellow. So steam sterilization cannot be assured unless proper cleaning of the device and reduced volume burden and soil was achieved. Verification and documentation of automated cleaning process through objective means is an important aspect of quality control. So guys, if you receive instruments from uh, from the nurses, so you don't you should do the manual brushing first because some some operators, some CSSD technician, they will send they will put direct uh, the instrument directly to the ultrasonic machine or the ultrasonic cleaner. It is not allowed. Think about it. Um, they steal blood or saliva in the instrument and you put it directly on the ultrasonic machine. Your chemicals that got contaminated um, easily. Instead, you you need uh, one mixing of enzymatic cleaner per, per day. You, you might need another set of uh, Mix, mixture of enzymatic and ultrasonic machine. So, you need to do the manual brushing first before putting any instrument in the ultrasonic cleaner. So, as for the new updates, it's a, containing a small vial containing an indicator solution and a quantity of glass nuclei beads in which when subjected to the correct habitation process within an ultrasonic washer, induce a color change in the vial solution. So the vial are, um, you will you, you will just soak it in the um, ultrasonic machine and then wait for 60 seconds and it will change. I'll send a video in the group so that you can see how it it will work.
This is your sample of your ultrasonic clean air test device. This is a sonotrack. So from the blue-green color, or sometimes it is blue, or sometimes it is, uh, it depends on the manufacturer, guys. It will change once you submerge it at 27 to 43 degrees Celsius and run it for 60 seconds, it will change to yellow. So it means your sound waves is working well. So if it is still green or dark green, it means your sound waves is not working well. So it cannot remove any degrees in the instruments. So if it is in the middle, the, what you can see in the middle, is quite can can clean, but not totally. So you need to change, uh, you need, the test device needs to be changed from blue-green to yellow. The third equipment is autoclave machine. This is your autoclave machine. Autoclave provides a physical method for disinfection and sterilization. They work in with a combination of steam, pressure, and time. So steam, pressure, and time. The autoclave machine, guys, will sterilize the instrument in a span of 3.5 minutes to 5 minutes. But the whole process in uh, autoclave will take at least 40 minutes to 1 hour. But the sterilization of instrument will just take 3.5 minutes to 5 minutes. The reason why it has a uh, process needs to be followed. Your machine, once you start the machine, it will start with preheating. So the temperature will rise until 121 degrees Celsius to 135 degrees Celsius. So first process in the autoclave machine is preheating. Once once the temperature of the autoclave machine reaches 121 to 135, then it will remain 121 to 135 for 325 minutes to 5 minutes to sterilize the instruments. After that, after the, the machine finished the, the sterilization process, the steam generate, generated inside will be evacuated soon. The machine will remove the steam, and then it will be. The fourth process is drying. The whole, so the whole process will take about 40 minutes. Pouch sealer. This is your sample pouches, different sizes of pouches. And this, this is your sealing machine. So you need to seal and pack. So, a heat sealer is a machine used to seal products, packaging, and other thermoplastic material using heat. This can be with uniform thermoplastic monolayer or with materials having several layers, at least one being thermoplastic. A clean seal is the, the one part of it is plastic. It will not stick if it is all paper or all plastic. If it is all plastic, then the steam cannot go inside the pouch and it cannot uh, it cannot penetrate the instruments. So heat sealing can be jo joined two similar materials together or can join these similar materials, one of which has a thermoplastic layer. So as for pouches, guys, the lower part of it is paper and the the upper part of it is plastic. So the steam will enter in the in the paper side and it will be retained because of the plastic area. So once it it evacuates steam, it will remove in the paper paper side also. Sterilization pouches as a packaging solution for sterilization application ensure the protection of the medical device against contamination with bacteria and chemicals 
from the time of sterilization until use of sterile medical device. So wide range of standard sizes allows optimum choice of a correct size pack for each item. So self-sealing pouches are pre-folded and assured accurate and fast seal without the requirements of heat sealing. There are self-sealing pouches. What you need to do is just remove the adhesive and fold it and stick, stick the pouches. So they are specially suited for use in small general practices, dental surgeries, and the user who wants to avoid cost of additional sealing equipment. So biological incubator and for vial or biological indicator. So on the left side, guys, this is your biological indicator or spore vial. So First, your biological indicator has a bacteria inside, which is in steam, it's Geobacillus thermophilus. So, this bacteria, the Geobacillus thermophilus, is the bacteria used to check the quality of uh, killing process of your autoclave machine. If you are using ethylene oxide, then it is Geobacillus atropius. But for autoclave, because it is commonly used, it is, we will discuss it, it's Geobacillus thermophilus. It's a device used to grow and maintain micro, microbiological culture or cell culture. The incubator maintains optimal temperature, humidity, and other condition, conditions such as CO2 and oxygen content of the atmosphere inside. Actually, guys, this, as you can see on your left side, your biological indicator, the purple is just your um, what, in, this is just your incubator solution, incubating solution. The bacteria is on the bottom part, which impregnated in in a small filter paper. So if you can see it uh, here, there's a small filter paper at the bottom of that um, vial. Your incubator should be operate, operated from 50 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. So that it should be preheated or heated or before putting the uh, spore vial, biological indicator. So biological indicator for steam and ethylene oxide contains a known quant quantity of bacterial spore inoculated on the filter paper placed inside a plastic culture with a crushable glass ampule containing the culture medium. The next supply, as you see, is the Bowie and Dick pack, test pack. The Bowie and Dick test pack consists of a series of air removal and steam penetration barriers. A chemical indicator is located in the center of each pack. As you can see, this blue part of the image, it will turn to black once it is exposed to steam. It is on the center of that test pack. So your test pack, guys, just imagine it. Actually, you can see it once you are here. There's a deck of paper, and uh, in the middle of the deck, there's a test strip or chemical indicator. This is the one shown in the picture. The blue line. The light blue line, it, it will turn to black once it is exposed in autoclave or steam. So the test pack is placed directly into, in, in, into the machine, inside the machine, at the bottom part 
of the machine near the window away from the, uh, from the drainage. So this test pack, the Boeing this test, will test your autoclave machine for air removal and steam penetration. Steam penetration or solid instruments. So Boeing this test is a test for steam penetration and air removal for solid instruments. Helix test set, this is your Helix test. Actually, your Helix test, guys, is the same. Steam penetration and air removal. But not for solid is not for the solid instruments, but for hollow instruments or porous instruments. Porous means hollow instruments. So as you can see on the device, there is like a straw line on the device. The, the steam will enter on this small straw and will go directly on the bottom, on the edge. In this edge, as you can see, you need to unscrew this one. And then put the chemical indicator inside. So once the steam will enter the the straw like uh, line, then it will the steam will go on the edge and will change the chemical indicator from yellow to purple, dark purple, or yellow to black. It depends on the manufacturer. So chemical indicator, this is your chemical indicator. This is the chemical indicator you will place in the pouch next to the instrument. Or actually it's over the instrument. But, but the the instruments they are not um they don't want to use over the instrument because as for them, over the instrument means above the instrument but it should be next to the instrument. So this is the, this is the chemical indicator, which is placed um, next to the instrument so that the, the user or, or the nurse will see this first before opening the instruments. So as you can see, the light blue color here, it will change to black once exposed to steam. So, this chemical indicator, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that it, once it changed from blue to black, it means it is sterilized. No. It only indicates that it was been exposed to steam. So, chemi chemical indicators are visual aids that show if an item has been subjected to the sterilization process. Most of these indicators change color. Some change from solid to liquid when exposed to high temperature, but this is the commonly used. So air compressor gun is one of your equipment in CSSD. Actually, guys, it is not air compressor gun now. It is instrument air. So aside from paper towel, air compress are used in drying instruments. Before, air compressor is... Uh, commonly used in CSSD to dry instruments. Some, some facility, I saw some facility, they are using blow dryer, but it actually is not allowed. The hair dryer, some, some facility, they are using it. So, the, the difference, guys, of compressed air versus air, instrument air is that before the compressed air the air coming coming out from the compressed air is not regulated, which means you don't know if the air contains some viruses or bacteria. Now, we mandated it to have the instrument air, which is there is a specific filter for the air coming out to the gun. So, The 
Now, the contamination area room should have instrument air. Actually, guys, it's in the preparation and packaging area because in prep and pack, you will dry the instrument there. So, manual cleaning, thoroughly rinse and dry a non living cloth or instrument air. Usually, uh, you are using it's either paper towel if you don't have instrument air. And then, as for the new updates, instrument air or a medical gas that falls under the general requirements for medical gases as defined by NFPA 99 is not required, is compliant with the ENFI and is filtered to 0 0.01 microns, free of liquids and hydrocarbons, vapors, and dry to a new form of 40 degrees Celsius. Before, the compressed air, sometimes there are um, liquids coming out. I think it came from uh, steam or sometimes if it is hot, it can create some puddles of water inside the in, inside the compressor machine. So PPE is one of your equipment and supplies. So PPE is personal protective equipment, is clothing and equipment wearing stuff to protect or shield their bodies from workplace hazards. So there there are a lot of PPE as you can see. Gown, utility gloves, actually guys it's um as per the new updates, once you once you do the manual brushing, you need to wear two gloves. So the utility gloves is outside and it there should be an inner gloves which is natural gloves. For us here, as when you can see it once you come, uh there are gloves intended for CSSD which is very long until it's uh it covers until the cuff of the gown. So, utility gloves plus natural gloves, uh, mask, actually mask, I, I still put mask, mask, but as per the new updates, it should be respirator or the N95 mask. The reason why it should be a respirator is that you are using chemicals, hazardous chemicals. So, if your chemical, if your chemistry or material safety data sheet, that's the, a few of your chemicals, once they instructed to use respirator, then you need to use respirator. Face shield is one of the equipment before it is goggles, but now it, uh, we change it to face shield. Shoe cover, head covering, and then earplugs or earmuffs. The reason why you need to put, um, Airpods, it's because as per OSHA guidelines, if the sound generating from an equipment uh, is above 85 decibels, then you need to protect your ears to avoid any hearing problems sooner in your life or later in your life. So, because the ultrasonic machine is very noisy and it it keeps the instrument using sound waves. And when we check it, it is above 40, uh, 85 decibels, then you need to wear earplugs. Label gun, this is a sample of label gun, is used to provide outside chemical indicator at the same time labeling for batch number, date, and CSS, CSSD stuff. Outside indicator can be easily filled and transferred to patient file for tracking that the specific instrument and batches are used for a certain patient. Your label gun, guys, is this the same same concept with when you see a label gun or price gun in a supermarket. So you need to place the sticker on the bottom part of the pouch on the plastic area. So there's no specific if you will put it on the left part, right part, as long as it is in the bottom near the opening 
where where your nurses and doctors will open the instruments. It should be near. So your label your label speaker or label guide should have the batch number, date it is sterilized, the expiry date, the CSSB technician, um, the CSSB technician processing the the the, the sterilization, and sometimes the instrument name they put it. This is your biohazard transport bin. Once you uh, once you get a soiled instrument, it should be placed on a biohazard transport bin. Your biohazard transport bin has a lock with biohazard logo. So biohazard containers are used for transporting instruments to sterilization department that may be contaminated with pathogens that present a danger to people and the environment. A biohazard container should be fully closable, sealed, should be free of leakage during handling, punctured resistant, storage or transport and be properly labeled with the appropriate biohazard label. This is your biohazard logo. It means that the instrument inside or any items inside is hazardous or infectious. So it has a lot to protect if ever um, it will fall, the contaminated instrument will not, will not contaminate the environment or your area. So, guys, there are some two, uh, two protocols in getting the instruments. It's either um, the CSSB technician will get the instruments or the nurse will send the instruments to CSSB uh, the contamination room. So it depends. It's either the nurse will send the soiled instruments to CSSB or the CSSB technician will, will take the instruments from the pickup point. Chemical spill kit, actually it is mandated and mandatory to have a chemical spill kit in CSSP because you are using chemicals in CSSP. You are to commonly used chemicals in CSSP. Your enzymatic cleaner or enzymatic detergent where, you, where these chemicals are used in enzymatic uh, ultrasonic machine. The second chemical is um, disinfect, instrument disinfectant. The third chemical is surface disinfectant. Surface disinfectant is the disinfectant chemicals used to clean your surfaces or working areas. Tabletop light and magnifier. Actually, it's a new update. The use of methods that are able to measure or detect organic residues that are not detectable using visual inspection should be considered in facility cleaning policy and procedure. So this is your tabletop lighted magnifier or magnifying glass with light. So it is placed in the inspe inspection area. So once, once you inspect instrument, you need to magnify it. It's still, there's no blood, there's no semen, all edges are clean. So this is the purpose of the tabletop light and magnifier. It is a new update, so if you are having your duty here or having your skill session here, you cannot still see this uh, magnifying glass. By the way, guys, all are. Uh, Statement, state uh, colored in red is all new updates. Blackboard pathogen kit, uh, blackboard pathogen kit is used to guard against exposure to blackboard pathogen from body fluids, pills, and cleanups. Kits contain the needed supplies to protect workers from these spills. 
guys, your your Blackborn Pathogen Kit is actually a small size of your chemical steel kit. It has the same content. Shark container is a form of biomedical waste composed of used sharks, which includes any device or object used to puncture or lacerate the skin. Sharks waste is classified as biohazard waste and must be carefully handled. You can see the same um, shark container in our CSS new room. But it is not commonly used. Why? Because for the protocols in CSSD, guys, any sharp, um, any disposable sharps should not be, should not reach the CSSD room. So the nurse, the doctor, should dispose immediately any disposable sharps. So you can see only sharps in CSSD, which is reusable, which means you need to sterilize it. For any um, disposable sharks, once it reaches the CSSD, you can ask an incident report to the nurse who sent or to the department who sent the uh, the sharks, which is uh, which which is not uh, following the protocols in CSSD. So only reusable sharks are meant to be sent in CSSD area. Chemicals, this is the three chemicals I have mentioned. So this is your supplies. Chemicals used in the cleaning process of instruments as well as disinfectant Disinfecting proper choices and dilution of chemicals are required for effectiveness of the cleaning process. Guys, every chemical, every manufacturer has a different dilution. So you need to check the MSDS or the Material Safety Data Sheet and ISU of these um, chemicals. So sometimes it, uh, the ratio is one liter of water, and then 20 ml of uh, chemicals, sometimes pure chemicals, no water, sometimes one liter of water, and 30 ml or 50 ml of chemicals. So it depends. So you need to compute. You need to do some uh, computation. So the, there are three common chemicals, which is, I already mentioned it, the instrument disinfectant, the enzymatic cleaner, and then the surface disinfectant. Eye washer. Emergency, emergency eye wash equipment is used to drench or flush the eyes with water when dust, irritants, or chemicals enters the eye. The term is sometimes written as one word, eye wash. So, your eye wash is a recommended flushing period of 20 minutes. So, an eye washer or an eye wash, which is in the bottle, bottle solution, it is not recommend. It is not acceptable in CSSD because in CSSD it is required to have an eye washer that can generate a water for 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes. Guys, when you see the MSDS or material safety data sheet, sometimes your chemicals will, will put there once you, once you have contact uh, ke of chemicals in your eyes, sometimes it returns there 40 minutes rinsing time in eye washer before sending to further first aid or further treatment to the hospital. So why are emergency shower or eye wash station important? The first 10 to 15 seconds after exposure to a hazardous substance, especially a corrosive substance, are critical. 
delaying treatment even for a few seconds may cause serious injury. So, it can cause blindness. It depends on the chemicals. That's the reason why there's an eye washer available. If there's no available eye washer, then use the sink. This is your sample eye washer. It is easily paddled. Once you push it, there's a, it will generate a water. Hand washing station, it is very important in CSSB because of some infection control protocols. So it is one of your supplies. There should be a disinfectant solution and then a wash solution. Brushes is one of your supplies and equipment in CSSB. As per the new updates, manual cleaning states clean zooming devices with a brush of recommended type, size, diameter, and length, and result type. So using the correct size brushes on medical devices will ensure adequate cleaning, cleaning uh, of the instruments. This will eliminate re-cleaning if found to be dirty. Re-cleaning, guys, once, because once you see in the magnifying glass that still there's a blood, you need to send it back to the brushing area or the contamination area. So to avoid uh, re-cleaning the instruments, you need to brush it. Uh, totally. Not that hard, just soft brushing. Unless the, unless the, the blood was dried in the instrument, it is difficult to remove. You need to re manually remove with, uh, you, sometimes you need some pointed instruments to remove the blood in the, if it's dried in the instruments. So, so it is important to read the manufacturer's ISU to determine which size brush is used for that device. Actually, as you can see, as you can always uh, hear, manufacturer ISU, medical device instruction, it is very important because we, as a CSS technician, we will just follow what is the what the manufacturer said to be the cleaning process or protocol of each instrument. We, we will not uh, clean the instrument as per our knowledge. It is as per the manufacturer or instructions for use manual. This is a sample uh, brushes, tooth brush style, which is, has a nylon brush, steel brush, and brass. Sometimes we, we have gold brush. This is your tube brush. This is used, for example, you have suction, uh, suction instruments needs to be uh, sterilized. Then the inner suction, the inner part of your suctions need to be um, brushed. So you need to use a proper size on tube brush because so that you can you can totally clean the inner part of the tube. So decontamination, general consideration for all devices and utensil states, reusable brushes should be cleaned after each use, disinfected or sterilized at least once a day. So once a day, once you've done your work or once you've done your shift or every shift, if you have two shifts in your facility, then every shift it will be disinfected. Brushes should not be used on the clean side to clean instrument. For example, guys, you are on the um, inspection area and you see some blood, remain, remaining blood in the instruments. And you should send it to the decontamination area again, not just brushing uh, brushing the clean instruments.
just to remove the remaining blood. No, you need to send it back to the decontamination area. So brushes should not be used on the clean side to clean instruments. If a medical device is found during injury inspection on the assembly side, it must be sent back to the dirty side to be re-cleaned. Because sometimes, uh, some, some cases in technician, once they are very busy, once they see some cement, see some, some, uh, blood, just a small portion of blood, they have an intended brush in, a, in the inspection area and then they will brush there or they will just wipe it with disinfectant and then pouch. No, it's not allowed. You need to send it back to the CSSD decontamination area and do the manual brushing and put it back again in the ultrasonic machine. So that's the second part. We will proceed to the third part. Guys, you have questions with the second part? I know. You have questions? No? So the third topic is CS hygiene attire and dress code. It's, it's, it is very short, actually. Short topic only. So CSS hygiene and attire, preventing the spread of microorganisms and maintaining appropriate environment for clean and sterile items requires good self-management skills. Hygiene and adherence to dress code protocols and critical components of infection prevention in CS department. So personal hygiene, hand hygiene is a term that means either hand washing or using an appropriate antiseptic hand rub, such as an alcohol-based product. Hand hygiene is considered the single most important factor in reducing infection. Hand washing refers to the use of soap, water, and friction to wash one's hands. Effective hand washing consists of wetting, soaping, gathering, and rigorously rubbing one's hand together between finger and nails for at least 20 seconds. Actually, 20 seconds is the contact time of the soap. And it will, uh, the hand washing procedure will take 40 seconds in total. Hand washing and CSSD should be done upon entering and leaving the CS department before and after the contamination, before inspection and pouching, before and after eating, before and after going to the restroom, and after in contact with contaminated items. So even if you are just handling the, for example, transport bin with soiled instrument, you need, once you remove your gloves, you need to do hand washing. The reason why, you don't know if your, the integrity of your gloves is intact because sometimes there are small holes. That's the reason why it is recommended to do the uh, hand washing even after wearing the gloves. Hand washing station is recommended in CSSB department. So it has a soap and a disinfectant solution 
and drying uh, drying equipment, either air dryer or paper towels, and then your hand washing guide. So it has a hand soap, antiseptic hand rub, paper towel, hand washing guide. So your hand washing procedure, you need to remove all your jewelry, turn on faucet using uh, paper towels, wet hands, and apply liquid soap. Work soap into leather and scrub hands for at least 20 seconds. So 20 seconds is the contact time. Keep hands at a lower angle than, el than elbows to prevent dirty water from running back onto arms. Center lace fingers to clean between them. Dry hands with clean disposable towels. Turn off faucet using a clean disposable towels. She as professional must wear a clean scrub suit specific for the area. Most hospitals do not do a color coding of a scrub suit per area depending on your institution policy. So the color of a scrub suit it depends on the facility. So for example, in CSSD, it's marine blue. So, CS professional must wear a tire specific for the area in which they work. This protects the employee and other staff members, patients, and the public. Scrub a tire should be changed daily anytime it becomes soiled or as soon as it may become contaminated. For visitor, surveyor, or auditor, please don't let them enter the decontamination room without shoe cover, mask, hairnet, and disposable gown. That's the protocol, guys. If you are letting someone enter the CSSD room, if they don't have the the scrub attire, the scrub suit intended for CSSD, then they need to wear the disposable gown, shoe cover if they don't have the intended shoes, mask and hairnet. Hairnet is very important because any strands of hair that might come in contact with instruments it will consider contaminated. So, a tire should be cleaned and laundered by the facility. CSSD area is considered high risk area together with ICU operating theater where scrubs are left behind the facility to be laundered, protecting others from inspection. As per the protocol, supposedly in CSSD, if you're working in CSSD, your scrub suit should be left in the facility, and the facility should be the one to send it to the laundry for for washing your clothes. So, as for ESAMs, technicians should change out their street clothing, clothing worn at home, and shoes and into scrubs and shoes kept at the facility. So, you should have a specific shoes intended for CSSD and intended scrub suit for CSSD. In UAE, other facilities have two types of scrub suit, where worn outside and other scrub suit to be worn inside. There are facilities that only provide one type of scrub suit, so their staff will come to the clinic in civilian clothing or street clothes, then change their clinical uniform inside the facility. So in the event you need to go outside the sterilization department to other departments of the clinic or hospital, please be reminded of the following. Change your shoes wherever you will go out in, the, in, in your department to other department. So your shoes, which is intended for CSSD, you cannot use it to other department. You cannot use it in the pantry. You cannot use it in the HR, HR office. Or you will send instrument to to medical clinic, you are not allowed to uh, use those shoes. So you need to have outside shoes. So if it is time consuming to change your shoes from time to time, an option given by HAD evaluator to put on shoe cover always without fail before entering the decontamination area. So if you don't have the intended shoes, then you can use the shoe cover, and then you can remove the shoe cover once you are outside the CSSD room. So,
In the event you need to go outside the sterile waste department to other departments of the clinic or hospital, please be reminded of the following. Put on lab coat to protect your scrub attire when leaving the department for another area of the same facility. Please be reminded of the issues, cover gown lab coats are not meant to protect departmental attire while outside the building. So if you are beside Bacala or any grocery store, you are not allowed to go to Bacala or grocery store while wearing lab coat. You need to remove your you need to change your uh, scrub attire to street clothing if you are going outside the facility. And the Ministry from BHA of Dubai, DOH of Abu Dhabi, and MOH and UEE warn staff using lab coat outside the facility that will compromise safety of the community. If you can see some, they, will, they can be uh, reprimanded and under investigation. Even guys, scrub suit or scrub attire, you are not allowed to use it outside the facility, especially if you can see some some healthcare professional using uh what do you call that one? Uh scrub suit in in public places like malls, grocery store, church or where else, they are allowed actually. As long as they are not uh, in the area of which is critical, which is ICU, OR, and then CSSD. So, in a study among 100 medical doctors in a hospital in the U.S., in 2016, it was revealed that 44% of quotes revealed organism in the sleeves and pockets. And furthermore, analysis of the organism revealed that stopping as Aureus ranked the first to contaminate the coats, followed by Shodomonas. In 2015, reports of World Health Population, Microbiological Analysis and Swabs taken from the cuff and pa packets of pollution, white coats, in an acute care hospital showed that 39.1% of the coats had bacterial contamination. MOH of UAE issued a circular giving warning to medical professionals using lab coat outside facility, which you can see in Ministry of Ministry of Health and Prevention warns against wearing white coat outside health facility. Circular number 174, published October 14, 2017. So, what to wear? CS dress requirements review. So, in the contamination area, guys. Once you enter the decontamination area, you need to have your scrub suit. You need to have your intended shoes. If you don't have your intended shoes, then you can put shoe cover. But the ideal is scrub suit plus intended shoes plus your hair net. If you have, if you have beard, you need to wear a beard cover. So in clean assembly area and sterile storage area, just surgical scrub suit and hair covering and your intended shoes. And if you don't have intended shoes, your uh, shoe cover. If you are going to operating room because you are sending instruments, you need to put lab coat. So remove upon entering the OR, surgical scrubs. Hmm. Once you enter the OR department, you need to remove your lab coat. So just put mask and hair covering. For hallway, cafeteria, and offices, you need to wear scrub suit with lab coat or street attire. So we will proceed to the next topic.
for chain of infection, this is your chain of infection as per um, medical infection prevention. So in CSSV, there are different chain of infection, but first we will tackle this up. So your chain of infection, it is IRPMTS or infectious agent, reservoir, portal of exit, mode of transmission, portal of entry, susceptible host. In my previous exam, in CSSD guys, it came out on uh, my exam, what is the first link? So, the first link is infectious agent. What is the third link? The third link is portal of exit. But you need to remind, be reminded that it should be portal of exit first before entry. Because when I took the exam, I, ha I have difficulty reminding, uh, to rem remembering if which will come first, which is the third link. Is it portal of exit or portal of entry? So, Remember this uh, chain of infection. So, infection transmission is a complicated process that involves many factors in order for a pathogenic microorganism to result in disease or illness. Causative agent is microorganism that cause an infectious disease. The first link is the causative agent, meaning pathogenic microorganism or bacteria, viruses, in fungi, protozoa, and prions. So, elimination, the only way to interrupt the transmission of a causative agent by promptly using a septic technique to avoid cross-contaminating, physically removing the contaminated substance through cleaning and using effective disinfection and sterilization process. Reservoir. The place where an infectious agent can survive. So the most common reservoir are human sources such as patient, healthcare personnel, family, visitors. So carrier A, person or organism infected with an infectious disease agent that displays no symptoms, although unaffected by the disease themselves, carrier can transmit it to others. So elimination, good personal hygiene and health habits the use of appropriate housekeeping measures and proper cleaning, the contamination, disinfection, and sterilization of hospital equipment. Portal of exit, the path by which an infectious agent leaves the reservoir, which is through coughing, sneezing, vaginal secretion, urine secretion, vomitose, stools, wound, mucus, blood, so the only um, body fluids that are not uh, part of reserve uh, cannot is not part of carrying any pathogens are your sweat. So portal of exit, it's actually the same of portal of entry. Sometimes where where is the exit? It will. It will, uh, where they can enter also. So mode of transmission, the fourth link is the mode of transmission or how a pathogenic organism spread. So if there are two types of mode of transmission, it's direct and indirect contact. So direct contact where organisms are transferred directly from an infected person to another via blood or blood containing body fluids, sexual contact, is one of the examples, or you have wound and an open wound of the patient, it can ca cause direct contact. In direct contact, a contaminated object or person, such as through inadequately clean instrument or sterilized, sterilized instrument, the hands of healthcare for personnel or contaminated PPE. For example, uh, you receive your instruments, soiled instrument, dirty instrument, and you are you are punctured by those instruments. You, visually, you cannot see any blood, 
but there are possibility of contacting any uh, pathogens and even there's no presence of blood as long as it, it is contaminated. Because sometimes, visually, it is clean, but microscopically, it has a virus. So, mode of transmission through droplet, cough, sneezes, so where, where the, uh, where it exists, sometimes it is where they enter. So, cough, sneezes, or talks during procedures, intubation, or suction means, airborne transmission occur when very small droplet, or the, what, what we call aerosol, are dispersed in the air over long distance by air currents and are then inhaled by susceptible individual. So, portal of entry, the fifth link is the portal of entry, which is, there are, they have, there are many types of portal of entry, your respiratory tract, genitourinary, intestinal, skin, if you have uh, open wounds, transplacental, or parenteral. So this is the summary of your chain of infection. So infectious, I abbreviate it with IRPMTS so that it can be easily be memorized or infectious agent. Reservoir, portal of exit, mode of transmission, portal of entry, susceptible holes. So, IRPMTS. So, I put the IC on the upper part because on my exam, it, it did not give an infectious agent word. It, say, it says causative agent. So, maybe there are times that just understand the question. Just understand the option because sometimes we are using different vocabulary. For example, for infectious agent, they use causative agent. So, chain of infection in CS perspective, this is the chain of infection in CS perspective. So, from bacteria to the patient, so once your patient is carrier already with pathogens, hep B, the patient is hep B active, the patient is hep C active, the patient is HIV active, then once the instrument is used to that patient, then your instrument is a carrier of that pathogens. So, I will just recall, for hep B, guys, when it is dried, which means it is, uh, once it the blood is dried, it, it can still transmit the hep B virus until seven days. For hep C, even if it is dried, it can transmit hep C virus until three weeks. For your HIV, actually it will survive for only an arm. So it will, uh, the virus will die eventually. So once in the third link of your chain of infection in CS perspective, once your surgical instrument is contaminated with pathogens and you as a CSS technician did not uh, properly follow the protocols in CSSD, you did not brush you, you did not do the manual brushing. You just directly put the, the instruments in the ultrasonic machine. Then you are risking everybody with another disease or by contacting the same disease. Then once you, you sterilize the instrument, and it, it's not adequately clean, it is used with a second patient, then your second patient will be infected. 
So in order to break this chain of infection in CS CSSD perspective, then you need to address the instruments. You need to adequately sterilize the instrument. So you need to follow the protocols. You need to do the manual brushing. You need to put the instruments in the ultrasonic machine. You need to inspect the instruments. You need to sterilize the instruments with, uh, with the usual or the standard standard protocols, especially in the autoclave. In the autoclave, guys, you can do a quick, quick sterilization and then the regular, the regular uh, sterilization process, which is the standard. The quick sterilization, guys, or immediate use of steam sterilization should only be used in terms of emergency. So, it will not be used if you don't have instruments. You will just uh, use uh, quick sterilization. It's not allowed. We are done with the fourth topic, so we will proceed with with the next topic. Guys, you have a question with the previous topic? So we will proceed with the next topic, which is the PPE. So the next topic, guys, is PPE or personal protective equipment. So PPE or personal protective equipment, clothing and equipment worn stuff to protect or shield your bodies from workplace hazards. Actually, this is the requirements of OSHA or OSHA. The OSHA or OSHA, guys, is their uh, responsibility is to protect the worker from any hazardous exposure. So PPE is any device or appliance designed to be worn by an individual when exposed to to one or more health and safety hazards. PPE includes all clothing and other work accessories designed to create a barrier against workplace hazards, and using PPE requires hazard awareness and training on the part of the user. 
So, CSSV technicians should anticipate the need of PPE and what kind of PPE needed in a certain situation area as per the TORU assessment. Aside from the normal duties of CSSV technicians, they are required also to be capable in handling blood-borne pathogens and bloody instruments are sent to CSSV. If bloody instruments are sent to CSSV, the statement here, guys, uh, because Supposedly, ideally, the protocols, there's no bloody instruments sent in CSSD. All instruments must be disinfected in the point of use, which means your nurse should disinfect or decontaminate the instruments first before sending it to CSSD. So, if bloody instruments are sent to CSSC department and was accidentally spilled or fall in the ground, or chemical spill common in sterilization departments, what kind of PPE needed in this event? So, that's the question. So, all PPE in CSSC consists of head covering, face shield, mask, gown, fluid resistant gown, gloves, utility gloves, and shoe cover, and earplugs. So, head covering, a disposable bufan cap, should be worn in all areas of the department. This will prevent hair from shedding or falling into the items being processed. Face shield, not goggles. Before it's goggles. Now it's face shields. Protect for the face, mouth, nose from splashes. So, you are protecting yourself from hazardous chemicals at the same time infectious or contaminated water. A face shield is another important factor in PPE. It blocks splash up from the water in the sink and protects the entire face and neck from encountering contaminated water and reduces reduces the risk of eye injury from hazardous chemicals even. Mask protect mouth, nose, and chin. It protects also from respirator tra respiratory tract and Airborne infectious aerosol. For now, mask is actually a already a seal put the mask, but if your MSDS states a respirator, then you need to put a respirator, not a mask. Gown provide barrier, comes in contact with potentially infectious liquid, protects skin and scrubs. So in the outer Outer layer of your gown, it should, you need to place a fluid resistant plastic gown. Protect the inner gown from exposure from contaminated water. So, utility gloves and plastic sleeves. So, utility gloves is the main or first option in uh, PPE, especially in the decontam contamination department. But the first, if ever, uh, in your exam, there's no utility gloves written, then you need to find the green gloves or chemotherapy graded gloves. So, compared to ordinary gloves, a chemotherapy graded gloves and chemical resistant gloves are recommended to use in the contamination area. Now, guys, you need to place two gloves. One inner gloves, which is the nitrile gloves, and the outer layer is your chemotherapy graded gloves or your utility gloves. So sometimes you can wear this as inner inner protect uh, inner gloves. This is your plastic sleeves. So this will protect you, your hands especially, from any um for any for uh, contaminated water that might go inside the gloves, the, the, the utility gloves. Shoe covers to provide a barrier against possible exposure to splashes, contaminated water, or contact with contaminated environment. Especially in your decontamination room, when you brush, especially when you, when you, you are not following the, the brushing protocols which is under the surface of the water, once you brush, you are contaminating that the area, which means 
some aerosol will go on the floor and it will contaminate the environment. So you need to do to have the shoe cover. Air plugs are useful for protecting your ears against loud noises while using compressor spray. A shoe compressor spray is already eliminated or while running the ultrasonic machine. So, donning of PPE. Before entering the sterilization department, dan surgical scrub, so your surgical scrub is not, should be intended for CSSD. Use closed shoes intended for sterilization department. Dan head covering and shoe covering. The mask, it is, it is okay not to wear it as long as the important three PPE, which is the scrub suit, the intended shoes, and then the head covering. Shoe covering if you don't have the intended shoes. And if you have a beard, then you need a beard cover. So, dunning of PPE, you guys, you need to first put on your gown. After that, you need to wear your mask. After putting your mask, you need to place your face shield. It's not goggles anymore. It's face shield. After that, you need to wear your shoe cover. And then gloves. Lastly is the gloves. So once you remove your PPE, you need to first remove your shoe cover. Then remove gloves, remove face shield, remove plastic gown and a surgical gown, remove mask, and then remove head covering. We will demonstrate it here once you are here. But guys, in the exam, sometimes the shoe cover is not present. So if the shoe cover is not present, you need to go to the next uh, PTE, which is gloves. So if shoe cover is not given, for example, what PTE you need to remove first, you know that it is shoe cover. If, it, if shoe cover is not available, then you will need to answer gloves, remove gloves. Previously, this is the guidelines of CDC, and in terms of PPE, before you have the option if you have their face shield, goggles, and just face shield and goggles, actually safety goggles, if not. So now, the new guidelines, you need to wear face shield, disposable full face shield. If you are using reusable, by the way, you need to disinfect it daily. So previously, it is your mask or respirator. Now, it is respirator. When before, you are just wearing gown. Now, you need to wear gown plus waterproof apron. If before, you are wearing one pair of gloves, which is your utility gloves, now you need to wear two pairs of gloves, protective gloves. If before, if you are not recommended to wear shoe covering, now you, you need to wear a shoe covering plus a fluid resistant pants. Actually, it's a plastic pants. Guys, let, let's have a break for 10 minutes, then we will ba be back at 12.40. You have any questions?
Do you have any questions, guys? No. No questions. So I think we are not yet finished. I think we are not yet finished. So if you are have uh, if you have any appointments or any uh, anything you need to go, uh, mm-hmm. you can excuse yourself. And me until one o'clock. Okay. If you are until one o'clock, then um, you can review the. You can <laughs> you can review the what you call the, the video. But guys, I'm not sure yet with the video if it is because this is the first time. But I I recorded it. But I need to check if it, the recording is. Uh, it's working, but I recorded this program. So we will be back at 12.40. Funny. No, guys. Actually, we are done because some of the topics it will be um, lectured on on uh, next session. So I will just discuss the sterilization, steam sterilization process, and then we are done because some of it. I already summarized it weekly, and then including the rationalization of each exam question.
Hello guys, let's continue. After this is our final um, discussion for for today. So I will focus on steam sterilization. So steam sterilization is a high temperature sterilization is a process of choice in many healthcare facilities, whether it is hospital, medical center, small clinics, it is the primary offers. Um, option. It is achieved by subjecting items being processed to thermal energy from moist heat, which is steam, or dry heat. Steam is the most frequently used sterilant or devices not adversely affected by moisture or heat because of a successful record of safety, efficacy, reliability, and low cost. So, factors that impact sterilization, the success of every sterilization process is not guaranteed. Several factors and conditions impact the effectiveness of all sterilization methods, including those using high temperature. It means, guys, it is the success of every sterilization process is not guaranteed because as a CSSD technician, you need to check the temperature, once the receipt of the autoclave came out, you need to check if if the temperature reaches 121 to 135 degrees Celsius, it is one factor. The second one is your Bowie and Dick test. If all the the chemical indicator of the Bowie and Dick, and Dick test changes from blue to black, the third is your biological indicator, which means your bacteria was been killed by by the steam sterilizer or by the autoclave. So by those combination, you can assume that the sterilization is successful or the instrument is already sterilized. So the type of microorganism present, some, some micro, microorganisms are more resistant to the sterilization process than others. The design of medical device, complex devices, present a challenge to sterilization process. So that's why you are using also um, helix tests to check for those porous instruments or hollow instruments. The number of microorganisms biobridge present when there are more microorganisms on a medical device, the sterilization process becomes more difficult. It, it means, which means, you need to do the manual brushing. You need to remove the biobridge 
of the instruments. You can see some of the images of it in the book, and we will discuss it more later on. That's the reason why you need to do the manual brushing before putting the instruments in the autoclave, before putting the instruments in the ultrasonic machine. You need to remove some of the bio burden, and fine removing, removal is to ultrasonic machine. So the amount and type of soil present, soil, soil means it's not uh, the soil you is uh, on the ground. The soil means uh, the saliva, so uh, other contaminants, uh, tissues, skin, like that, or contaminated tissues. So that's what soil means. So soil acts as a shield to protect microorganisms. Bio burden the number of microorganisms on a contaminated object, contaminated object, also called bio load or microbial load. Advantages of steam sterilization. Steam is a sterilant of choice for several reasons: low cost, rapid sterilization cycles, relatively simple technology. Leaves no chemical residue or byproducts. And the steam sterilization does, doesn't have uh, byproducts or chemical residue. Where ethylene oxide has. So you will, you will discuss it more on uh, fourth or fourth week, I think, fifth week. So relatively simple technology, you will just put and place the pouches. Close it and then start. Unlike the ethylene oxide, there's a ethylene gas, which is a which is a, placed in a canister. Then rapid sterilization cycle because it will be finished. The sterilization will be finished for 14 minutes, while ethylene oxide, for example, will finish in 12 hours, 8 to 12 hours. So tabletop sterilizer, this is commonly used in clinics and medical center, but the same uh, protocols in even in the small or big or large equipment of uh, steam sir, uh, out of the machine, it has the same uh, protocols and procedures. So in the hospital, this is the commonly used cart and carriage loading sterilizer. It is auto clean. Floor loading sterilizer. So there are three bacteria commonly um, seen in CSSD, which is commonly uh, So we 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 commonly encounter these three bacteria, which is hydrophils, mesophils, term, it's thermo thermophils or thermophilis. So hydrophils or hydrophilis is under cold temperature. Meso is moderate from M it's M M. So thermophil Thermophiles or thermophilis is warm temperature or 50 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. For thermophilis or thermophilus, this is the bacteria which is we are killing, especially we are using um, autoclave. So if this, our, our biological indicator is geobacillus stearothermophilus which can withstand to 50 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. The back, our autoclave temperature is 121 to 135 degrees Celsius. So by that, it is impossible that it cannot kill the thermophilus bacteria. So I already discussed this. Um, I already discussed the cycles in steam sterilizer, which is the conditioning or preheating. The machine will preheat. Exposure 
It's 3.5 minutes to 5 minutes. It depends. So the exposure will start once it reaches 121 degrees Celsius to 135 degrees Celsius. Exhaust means all steam generated in the machine or in the chamber will be removed or will be evacuated. Drying will start to, to dry the instruments. So for conditioning, Steam enters the upper back portion of the sterilizer. As the steam enters, air is displaced through the drain. As steam continues to enter the sterilizer chamber, pressure begins to rise, as does the steam temperature. For exposure, after the desired temperature reach, which is the 121 to 135, the sterilizer control system begins timing the cycle exposure phase, which is 3.5 to 5 minutes. Exhaust, at the end of the exposure phase, the chamber drain is open and the steam is removed. The, this creates a void in chamber. Filtered air is gradually reintroduced into the chamber, gradually returned to room temperature. Actually, this is not the room temperature. It's still hot. Drying. Drying begins at the conclusion of exhaust phase. Dry times are based on the device packaging, sterilizer IFU. At the end of this, of this drying time, the end cycle signal sounds and the door may be open. So once you open it, you need to wait at least two hours to remove the instrument. But safe to handle is 30 minutes. You can, you can safely remove the instruments within 30 minutes. But in the manual, it is recommended to at least two hours to cool the instruments before removing it. The most common reason for sterilization failure is the lack of contact between steam and the entire surface of the device. Failure to adequately clean the object being sterilized, any coating of soil such as protein or oils dries in your prep and pack. Preparation area, sometimes you are putting oil or lubricants in the instruments. So once you, once you put uh, oil or lubricants in the instrument, you need to remove the excess oil so that it will not uh, contaminate the pouch. So you need to remove the excess oil by wiping its other disinfectant wipes. Sets are too dense or instrument position in a way that does not allow steam contact. The most common reason for package wrapped too tightly is packs are wrapped too tightly, air becomes trapped and cannot escape. So if air cannot escape, then wet packs will be considered. Sometimes it cannot evacuate properly, proper steam, uh, enough steam, then it can create a puddles of water. Loads that are too crowded, packs must be arranged with adequate spacing on the part. If you can see here, every layer of your um, tray in autoclave, there should have enough space available. So if you can see every layer, it has a space to proceed with the sterilization. So if they are packed too tightly, air may not be able to penetrate into all areas. So containers that are positioned incorrectly, basins and other items that can hold water must position so air can be removed and water can escape. For example, your kidney basin, the handle of your kidney basin should face on the paper side. Paper side of your pouch. They should place on the paper side of the pouch. If you are uh, placing the, for example, kidney basin, you need to place it on the side in the autoclave. I mean, in the side, which is standing, posi standing position. Actually, guys, it should be on the side. Every instrument, as long as ever you have the 
um, intended trace. So I will discuss it more once you are here. So clad drains trainer, more sterilizer have a small drains at the bottom of the chamber to keep clean tape and other small objects from entering. Sometimes your drain will be clogged by sticker or taper. For, for example, your um, label sticker, sometimes it will be removed, it will go directly on the drain. So you, you can remove it, but sometimes the lid, for example, you are using um, cloth, which is green cloth, some lint will be collected and it will be stuck, stuck in the strainer or drainage. Utility malfunction, boiler or steam delivery system, problems can occur and qualified service representative is needed to make repairs. So to be effective, steam sterilization must occur at specific temperature. These temperatures are needed to kill heat resistant bacteria. So it's 121 to 135 degrees Celsius. So for rough instruments, for example, guys, the exposure time is 4 minutes and 3 minutes for a, a drop. Actually, it depends on the machine because we cannot set it. We're just setting it with um, rough instruments and the rough like that. So the machine will do automatically what is needed to be done. Then it's either how many minutes you will finish. It's either 35 minutes, 40 minutes. It depends on the machine. There's no guarantee it will finish on exact 30 minutes or 35 minutes or 40 minutes. So loading steam sterilizer allow for proper steam penetration and avoid overloading packages. Must be placed for efficient air removal, steam penetration, and evacuation. If a shelf liner is used or tray liner, it should only be made of absorbent materials. So mostly your tray liner is absorbent materials. So you can see it here also. Solid container must be positioned so air can be, can exit and steam can enter. When combining loads, place hard goods on the bottom to prevent condensation from dripping onto the lower packs. So if ever hard object dies, it should be on the bottom if you are placing it inside the autoclave machine. But if you are placing if you are placing the uh, trays, hard goods or hard trays or heavy objects in um, in your storage area, you need to place it in the middle. Okay. In sterilization, in autoclave, once you place the um, heavy instruments, you will need to place it at the bottom part. But if you if you are finished finish sterilizing, once you store it, you will place it in the middle storage air, uh, storage area. So packages must not, must not touch the chamber walls. Basin set should stand on edge, should be tilted for drainage, so if water is present, it will run out. Stand paper plastic peel pouches on edge using a basket or rat. So placing plastic side down may cause moisture to remain inside, and placing them plastic side up may cause water to stand up on top of the plastic. Place them to the sterilization pouches or place paper to plastic for air and steam circulation. But the rack for stand paper plastic peel pouches on edge is not usually available. So you can wear, uh, you can use the protocols which is paper plastic protocols, paper plastic protocol, paper plastic paper protocols, which is the bottom part is paper and the plastic part is the upper uh, Surgical instrument trays with perforated bottoms should sit flat on the shelf, maintain even instrument distribution, and to facilitate drainage. 
Do not unload packages before they are cooled. Placing hot or warm packages on surfaces will cause condensation to occur beneath and or between them. If you remove hot instruments and place it directly on the on your working area, metal, especially metal area, it will create uh, puddles of water or steam. It can create steam. So it can cause wet packs. So remove it once it is properly cool. If warm packages are placed in plastic dust cover, condensate so condensate will be trapped until open and the moisture may be damaged items protected by dust cover. So if it is warm, it is still there's still um ha, uh it's warm, the, the packaging is still warm, and then you put a plastic covering on it, it can create a puddles of water, which is, it can generate steam on the instruments. Handle the sterile packages as little as possible. Items should not be moved or touched until they have cooled to room temperature. Wet packs may, be, may occur when a steam sterilization process is used. Packages are considered wet when moisture in form of dampness, droplets, or puddles of water are found. Wet packs are considered contaminated and must be completely repackaged and reprocessed. So, process of wet packs. Wet packs means the instruments is not properly dry. Packs that were improperly prepared or loaded incorrectly for sterilization. This is the most frequent cause of wet packs. This means <clears throat> which means if you are have uh hollow instruments, you need to place them where the drain can the the steam can escape. So heavy or dense instrument sets, for example you are putting heavy heavy instruments or heavy tray, you don't need to put it on the top, put it on the uh, bottom part. Not using absorbent materials to weak moisture between heavy metals such as basin. If you are, if you have kidney basin, for example, that needs to be sterilized, you need to put a tray liner on it so that once it drains some, some moisture, the moisture will go directly on the paper uh, tray liner. Textile packs wrap too tightly. So, improperly wrap items such as items wrap while moist. So, you, when you are pouching instruments, you need to pouch it once it is totally dry, but with uh, seal with moisture or it's wet, then you pouch it directly because you don't have time. Metal items positioned in a way that allows water to pull or trap steam. Instruments and basin sets that are too dense or overload. Improper placement of concave items such as medicine cups. For example, your medicine cups. The hollow of the medicine cup should place on the paper side. Plug drain line. Gasket that completes your cup. Black steam lines. faulty drain welds. Actually, you can detect this with some quality checks that we will discuss more next week. So, guys, we are done with our first lecture. Um, for next week, it's December, uh, January 4, we will discuss Chapter 1 to Chapter 5 plus some of the Chapter 6 to Chapter I think so. We will do, but we will focus on chapter one to four rationalization. But we will tackle chapter five to nine next week. So tomorrow you need to answer your exam pass uh, exams. So I I'll be sending your exams today. So hope you can answer those questions. Um. It is closed notes so that we can check and detect where we, where to focus in uh, reviewing more uh, on the topics.
Do you have any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay, um, we are done. Chapter 1 to 4, um, chapter 1 to 5 will be the exam. So I'll, I'll, I'll send the chapter 1 to 5 exam question, so just print it and answer it. There are two sets of exams, which is the... There are two sets of exams. There are two sets of exam guys. Review quizzes and then chapter one to chapter one to Five. And then the progress test. <laughs> so we will start first with the review quizzes. I was yes. Today, so you can print it and then answer some of the. You need to submit the the exams tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Sir John, are you going to be sending the questions today? Yeah. Question paper? Yeah, I'm sending the review quizzes first because I think the mm -hmm. the progress test. It's not yet applicable to us. So uh -huh. we will start with review quizzes chapter one to five. Uh -huh. So we are done. So I will just check if uh, Our session for today is already finished, so let's meet on December, uh, January 4, next week. So it will be a review on the exams, how to answer and how to rationalize every every question. Okay, right, guys, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.